Good evening and welcome to Millennium Stage. Please give a warm welcome to the United States Band, Pershing's own chamber player. Thank you. 
All right. Good evening. I'm Staff Sergeant Doug O'Connor from the United States Army Band Pershing Zone. And on behalf of our leader and commander, Colonel Andrew J. Esch, it's really an honor and a pleasure to welcome you here tonight to the Millennium Stage at the Kennedy Center. So thanks so much for being here. What a great crowd. Uh, the piece you just heard is by uh, a student uh, from the under, I'm sorry, from <laughs> When I was a student at Eastman, University, Eastman School of Music, there was a student there named Matthew Pod who wrote this wonderful piece for his friends, and he was only an undergrad when he wrote it. So um, it's been a long time since I got to hear it, and that's what we opened the program with. So the theme of tonight's program is celebrating 21st century saxophone music and the diversity that the instrument and the music written for it encompasses. And one of the reasons it's particularly appropriate for an army band concert is the saxophone's history and uh, promulgation throughout the world is deeply linked to the history of the military bands. In fact, the saxophone got its start in military bands in Europe and quickly uh, got taken all around the world. In fact, there were Strauss pieces whose first performances in the United States were played with saxophones in the ensemble, transcriptions of the original work. So with that in mind, stepping into the 21st century, we have lots of new music being written for the saxophone in a variety of genres from a variety of people, and so we're going to celebrate that here tonight. Um, the program focuses or is built around a particular piece, Pillars, by Dr. Osnat Netzer. She's our guest pianist and composer. And that piece and the Army have a couple of things in common. They have these things called core values. So her pillars refer to her core values of composition. She was reworking that in her life, and they are as follows. Uh, one, idiomaticism, meaning writing music that's really custom tuned to the instrument that you're writing for, as well as the person and the, the, the sound. So not trying to make a saxophone sound like a clarinet, but really digging in on what the saxophone is. Two, abstract counterpoints, and three, abstract harmony. These are the trickier ones. So when we talk about harmony and counterpoint in music, we're talking about the way that notes interact. So that's a discrete or concrete way of using those terms. But if you layer ideas or moods or things that are more abstract and up in the air, then you open up a lot of doors there. So that's pillar two and three. And number four is play with groove. So to have a beat that rebels against the pulse and yet sticks to it at the same time. So all the music on tonight's program is picked with these four pillars in mind. And um, so as you can tell, the jazz element is super groovy, right? All right, so we're gonna move on to a really unique piece written by a composer I just met earlier this year. His name is Rodrigo Cesar Boussad. Uh, he's originally from Brazil and now he's composing in Chicago. And he wrote this fabulous piece uh, for a couple of saxophonists who worked on it with him, Alison Balsitas and Elliot Gategno. And he originally wrote it in a graphic notation score. He had a, a fever dream about a snake devouring him. And he, he wrote this piece, and the reason why I'm presenting it here for you today is that it uses the saxophone in a way that's so colorful and alien and strange, almost like it's a completely different instrument. So we're gonna use some reverb on the microphone, and uh, this is the idiomaticism selection on the menu tonight. So um, uh, give me just a moment. This is Kundalini by Rodrigo Busada. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you so much. This is not a saxophone, huh? <laughs> so for our next selection, um, this is more along the lines of the counterpoint and harmony aspect. Uh, we chose a piece by DC native composer Jeffrey Mumford, uh, who I first became acquainted with through this wonderful cellist named Christine Lamprea, who played one of his celli concerti. And I found out when asking about his music that he had a duo for cello and saxophone, which is a really um, not as odd a combination as you might think. There's actually a really great piece by mathematician and composer and something of a Western music black market purveyor in Russia named Edison Denisov. He used to get together with Sofia Gubaidalina before the fall of the Great Wall, and they'd, they'd steal away into the back corner of someone's apartment and look at scores of Stravinsky, right? And other pieces like that that were forbidden to them at the time. So these are really interesting musicians that started the genre. And um, I, th I think I probably should let you just listen to the piece and come to your own interpretations and ideas of it. This is called Reflected Air, uh, again, by Jeffrey Mumford. Give a second to get set up, and we'll play the piece for you. Thank you. Oh, Would you please welcome my colleague, Sergeant First Class Ben Wenzel on the cello. It's Reflected Air.
Good evening. Thank you so much. And now we come to the work that the program has been built around, Pillars by Dr. Osnat Netzer. And I'll tell you how I met Osnat. It was at the University of South Florida New Music uh, Convention or Conference. And I got this piece in the mail, and I was one of the panelists for what pieces were going to be played at this conference. And, and man, I was blown away by this piece. And it turned out, after everything had been selected, all I had was a score. It had been written for a great friend of mine, Jeffrey Landsman. So uh, Dr. Netzer is up at Harvard University where she's a preceptor there. She got to know my buddy Jeff who is um, studying saxophone at the New England Conservatory. And man, they put together a really cool far out piece. And um, so I, I kind of obsessed about this piece for a while. There's a lot of uh, amazing rhythms. Again, all four pillars, you're gonna hear them. The counterpoint, the harmony, the idiomaticism, uh, really unique saxophony kind of stuff, and most of all, the groove play. So without further ado, will you please welcome our fabulous guest and piano collaborator, Dr. Osnat Netzer. This is her 2014 work, Pillars, thank you.
Thank you so much again for joining us this evening. We are the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, and um, you should check us out online. The Army Band does tons of concerts of all sorts of a different nature. So my personal assignment is the ceremonial band. So when you see ceremonies and memorial affairs, uh, that's the kind of thing that all of us do in the bands. We also play concerts. There's lots of different ensembles in the Army Band playing free concerts all the time, and you should check one of them out coming up. It's on August 18th at 8 p.m. It's the 1812 Overture Concert, a real summer popular favorite. So check out the website for more information on that. Check out our Facebook, and uh, please do stay in touch and let us know how you enjoy this concert as well as others. So um, to conclude our little 21st saxophone journey, we're gonna close with another jazz sax quartet. This one's written by Raymond Ricker, uh, who used to lead the Institute of Music Leadership at the Eastman School of Music. He's a great saxophone player himself, and he wrote this piece. Uh, it's in three movements, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks again for being here, and we'll be around to take your questions after. Thank you.
Thank you. 